Hi, and welcome to this tutorial lecture regarding the change management. In this session, we're going to talk about what's the normal change, and also we're going to discuss about the process of the normal change. So at first, let's begin from the normal change definition. A normal change refers to change that must follow the complete change management process. It means for the normal change organizations, they have the, the free defined process and steps which should be followed. Normal changes are often categorized according to risk and impact. Uh, it means that the normal changes in organizations are categorized under three levels. Either the change is very risky and the impact of the change is very high. Either it's a, a medium risk and also the impact is medium or I, either it's a low risk and the impact of the change is also low. So let's you know discuss these three categories of the change. For example, a minor change, low risk and impact. Normally, if the change is the low risk and impact, so the change managers are deciding about this type of change and they are managing the change. If the change is significant, the medium risk and impact, uh, so then the change will be uh, sent for the approvals to the CAP, the Change Advisory Board. If the change is a high risk and impact, it means the, 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 the risk of uh, the change is very high and the impact on the organization is very high. So still the CAP will decide and approve about, about the change. By definition, a normal change will proceed through all steps. As we mentioned before, that for the normal changes, the organizations have predefined steps and processes which should be followed. It means a normal change go through all the processes and steps which are pre-arranged or predefined by the organization. And further, we can say about normal change that it is not like a standard or emergency change. It does not follow uh, like, like you know, a, a very uh, strict uh, timeline regarding the implementation of the change. These sort of changes are normally introduced by the organization in order to improve their performances and functionality of the system. As we said earlier on, if these uh, sort of changes uh, are carrying a very uh, high impact and risk or a medium uh, risk and impact, so these changes are evaluated by the CAP. And also, if the normal changes are happening repeatedly in the organization, so the CAP will just uh, convert these normal changes into the standard changes. And also one thing more, before the implementation of the normal changes, these sort of changes are evaluated, authorized, and then scheduled according to uh, a standardized process. Uh, so these uh, sort of changes, they should follow the planned steps in approvals from the management. The steps which are included or involved in normal uh, change process are uh, the RFC, assist the change, determines approval requirements, belt authorization needed, belt authorization, and also the review RFC. What RFC stands for? It means request for change. RFC is started from the requesters that who really wants the change to be implemented. The change is registered by the change coordinator and then it is sent for the assessment, assist the change, that it will be performed by the change owners. They are assessing the change from the impact and risk uh, evaluation aspect to see whether the change is a high risk and impact or whether it's a medium risk and impact or whether it carries a low risk and impact on the organization, on the structure of the organization, the employees, the stakeholders. After this, determines approval requirements. This stage is performed by the change manager. The change managers uh, in this stage, they review the change and see whether a cab needs to be called for meeting or not. If the change was a low risk uh, or in, in low impact, so uh, the change managers, they will manage the change by themselves. But if the change was categorized 
as the high risk or the medium risk in high impact and medium impact change. So then CAP need to be called for further evaluation in assessment of the change. Moving on to build authorization needed. This stage is also performed by the change manager. If build authorization is not needed, the change manager determines whether the change should be approved or reject. It means if the change does not require uh, the cap to be called, so at this stage, the change manager can decide whether to reject the change or approve the change. If build authorization is needed, so then the members are identified and the cap will be called for further evaluation in assessment of the change. Build authorization. This stage is performed by the CAP, by the Change Advisory Board, and the change managers working together in coordinating in order to approve the change or reject the change. The last stage in the process is the review RFC, which is performed by the change owners. Once again, they are going to review the request for change, which was earlier on logged by the requesters. So the normal change, as we explained before, follows the process in which the change coordinator assists and evaluate the request submits uh, you know, for the managers in order to be approved. The managers can perform some of the following actions in, re in, re in relation to the uh, change uh, and also request for change. The change managers either improve, uh, you know, approve the change, the request is assigned to the change advisory board for approval or for further assessments or either the change manager reject. The request is uh, reassigned to the change coordinator for re-evaluation or request is closed. It means if the change uh, or request for change is uh, needed to be reassigned to the change coordinator for re-evaluation uh, to see or evaluate the change once more or either it will be closed by the change manager. The CAB assesses the request with one of the following actions. The, the change advisory board, they are assessing or evaluating change in the following ways. Either the change is approved by all CAB members, or either one of a CAB member reject or approves the change, or either urgent approved by all approvers. It means the request is submitted for urgent approval by all the CAB members. Uh, even you know, in this stage, the managers, the change managers, can withdraw the request from the CAP. It means they can close down uh, the request for uh, change. Uh, normally in organizations, the CAP, the change advisory boards, uh, their meetings are arranged on weekly basis uh, for reviewing the changes. So it's important for the RFC uh, requesters that in order to uh, apply for a change or register a request for a change, they should register the request for a change few days uh, before the meeting is going to be held. Uh, because, you know, it will give chance uh, to the coordinators and managers of the change uh, to submit uh, the change, uh, to submit the, the change uh, for the approval to all the meetings uh, and also to all the CAB meetings and also the CAB members in order that they can see uh, the request for change and evaluate and read uh, that change uh, and also that request for change. Uh, typically during the CAB meetings, the people who have requested the change under consideration are invited. So this is the time uh, during the CAB meeting, the people who have uh, earlier on registered the RFC, a request for a change, they are called in order that they should present uh, and also the reasons that why the change is, uh, you know, uh, like, like, you know, register in why the change is asked or why the request for change is asked. So they have, they have the chance to evaluate once more during this time at the RFC, whether the change is important or not important. If the CAB members, it means the change advisory board members are satisfied uh, with the presentation of the RFC requesters who have uh, requested for change. So the change will be scheduled and it will be implemented. Otherwise, uh, you know, the change will be rejected.